Hey guys, Tanner here. I noticed a lot of people have trouble using Melia in Xenoblade Chronicles, and for a good reason. She's definitely the most unique character in the game. Like, mechanically, she literally works differently from all the other characters. Her talent arch and elementals can be confusing at first, her physical stat is non-existent, and she's about as sturdy as toilet paper drenched in water. Just look at how horrible her defense and agility and HP stats are. Her agility and HP in specific are the lowest of any character in the game. If she gets the aggro, she will die. It isn't even a question. Oh, and her AI is almost as tragic as her story. However, despite all these weaknesses, she has a ridiculously amazing ether stat, and an amazing set of skills and arts. I'd honestly say that once you learn how to use Melia, she's one of, if not the, most broken and fun characters to play as in Xenoblade Chronicles. So, first things first, we need to go to the second treasury, a hidden area in the Hyantia tomb. It can be very easy to miss if you're just casually going through, so this is how to get there. You want to skip travel to the Tower of Trials bridge, on the bottom floor. Immediately, turn around and walk through the hallway behind you, and face the right wall. In the second of those white areas with the enemies in them, there will be a passageway instead of the normal white void, and the passageway doesn't show up on the map. Walk through the hallway, and you will arrive at the second treasury. Normally there's a level 38 unique monster in here, but I already killed it. And in this diamond box, which I already opened, you will receive the ruby glasses and an art book for Summon Bull that allows you to level it up to level 10. And congratulations, you have just broken Melon. Not only are the ruby glasses amazing equipment that I don't even get rid of until literally right before the final boss, but it also has an Aether Up 5 gem automatically equipped to it. And considering at this point you're still using level 3 gems, that is ridiculous. And you get a level 10 art book with relative ease for one of Melia's best and most important arts. Needless to say, going here is basically essential to playing Melia. Now onto her arts. Her talent art is Elemental Discharge. You see, a lot of her arts are called Summon Insert Element here, and those are called Elementals. When she uses those arts, different colored balls will appear over her head, and they will cast buffs on any characters near you, including yourself. If you use Elemental Discharge, the last elemental you summoned will go away and be used as an attack, but the buffs will leave with it. It's Melia's main way of attacking, and if used right, it's one of the strongest moves in the game. However, due to how frail Melia is, you don't want to do too much damage so that you don't attract the aggro. So you have to find a good balance between attacking with her elementals and using them to buff your party. Another great thing about this attack is that, unlike other talent arts minus Sharla, the talent gauge does not have to be full to use it. You actually fill up the talent gauge by using elemental discharge. And once it's full, Melia enters an aura called Elemental Burst which doubles the damage of discharged elementals. The length of elemental burst is dependent on random chance, but the chance of it lasting longer is greater the higher tension Melia has. Summon Bolt is her most essential elemental. When summoned, it gives an Aether Up buff to characters around her, and considering Melia is highly based off of Aether, it's an art that I use a lot. Another thing to note is that the buffs elemental gives actually stack, so if I summon two Summon Bolts, that's two ether up buffs, and trust me, this will be very important for later. But aside from the buffing aspect of it, it's Melia's strongest elemental when discharged in terms of immediate damage, so that's another reason it's extremely useful. Summon Flare is an elemental that gives a strength up buff when summoned. It's pretty useful for the strength up buff alone. It's not too fantastic as an attack, but it does hit multiple enemies and inflict blaze, so there's that. Summon Ice is an elemental that buffs Aether Defense. The Aether Defense buff is nice, but that's not what makes this attack awesome. When discharged, it does pretty okay damage in a circle around Melia, but the highlight of this move is that it inflicts chill on the enemy. Not only is the chill damage amazing on its own, but the chill damage is increased when the Aether off buffs from Summon Bolt. And combined with an elemental burst and or chain attack multipliers, she will be doing over 10,000 damage every two or so seconds. It's ridiculous. 
And to top it all off, things like chill and poison damage won't increase aggro, so you can do this much damage with no expense to melee. It's stupid. Hypnotize is a pretty good defensive art. It puts the enemy to sleep for a pretty long time, so it can be good in battles against multiple enemies when you only want to fight one at a time. Or you can use it if you attract the aggro and don't want to die. Spear Break may seem like a pretty lame art at first, and you're right. On its own, it is lame. Why would you ever use Melia for a physical attack that isn't even that strong? And slow isn't an important enough debuff for me to even bother. But trust me, the art will be very important later on. Shadow Stitch is another of Melia's defensive arts, and my personal favorite of them. It inflicts bind on the enemy for a very long time, and unlike Hypnotize, hitting the enemy won't wake it up and allow it to move again. So if you attract the aggro, you can use Shadow Stitch, run out of range of the enemy's attacks, and let the other party members wail on them and take the aggro off of you. And while out of range, you could cast more elementals or attack more since the enemy can't do anything about it. Summon Copy summons the last elemental you summoned again. So if I use Summon Bolt, then Summon Copy, I'll have two Summon Bolts, which means two Aether Up buffs. I think you get the idea why this move is stupid awesome. Reflection is another of Melia's defensive arts, and usually if I'm not using Shadow Stitch, I'm using this instead. Basically, any attack that is not a talent art will be reflected back at the enemy. What makes this great is that not only is Melia unable to be harmed by non-talent art moves, but it's also the best way of dealing with ether-based attacks in the game. However, the downside to Reflection is that it doesn't last very long, meaning that the other party members might not be able to get the aggro off of you in time. Summon Wind gives an agility up buff when summoned. Despite agility being one of the most important stats in Xenoblade, I never really found the 10% extra from Summon Wind all that useful. I used it a lot in the beginning of the game, but I never really found that the buff made much of a difference, if any. Nevertheless, it's pretty good as an attack. It hits multiple enemies and is the second strongest elemental in terms of immediate damage. Summon Earth is the same case as Summon Ice, stupidly OP, though I like Summon Earth even more. When summoned, it gives a physical defense up buff, and Melia needs all the physical defense she can get. And when used it as an attack, it does pretty lame damage, but it inflicts poison. The poison damage is ridiculous, and lasts for 30 seconds, as opposed to chill, which only lasts for 10. So every 2 seconds, for 30 whole seconds, you could be doing over 10,000 damage at no expense to you. It's ridiculous. And the only downside that I can think of is that it has a pretty long cooldown period. Summon Aqua is, in my opinion, her worst elemental. When summoned, it gives everybody regenerate. But the regenerate buff doesn't heal that much, at all. And when discharged, it's the weakest of her elemental. It heals Melia slightly, but still not for that much. Healing Gift is useless. Just don't. Why would I sacrifice my he HP to heal someone else for not even that much when I'm the frailest character in the game? Just no. Starlight Kick is finally what makes Spear Break useful. You may still be asking how a physical attack on Melia could be useful in any sense of the word, but hear me out. If Starlight Kick is used after Spear Break, it forces Topple without any need for inflicting break. So if an enemy is immune or resistant to break so that you can't topple it, Melia just topples it anyway because she's just that awesome. Trust me, this is one of the best topples in the game, so you should use it. The only big problem with it is that it takes up 2 out of your 8 art slots, and considering Melia has a lot of good arts, each and every one of those 8 slots are precious. Power Effect is an interesting aura. It doubles the range in which your elementals will buff the other characters for 15 seconds. It can be pretty useful for the Shadow Stitch strategy I mentioned earlier, but I think Melia just has better stuff. It's still pretty interesting though. Burst End is a special art that can only be used in Elemental Burst mode. It decreases the physical defense and ether defense of enemies around Melia. It's pretty useful, but I personally prefer her next art, Mind Blast. 
It's also a special art that can only be used in elemental burst mode. It does massive damage to enemies in range. And the attack's range is like a fan in front of Melia. But not only that, but it is the only move in the game that inflicts art seal, which, obviously, forces the enemy to not be able to use any arts. This attack is amazing. So that's all of Melia's arts. She has a lot of good ones, and which ones you choose are based upon personal preference. For example, Burst End over Mind Blast, or Reflection over Shadow Stitch. But here is the set of arts that I generally like to use. Mind Blast. Starlight Kick. Spear Break. Shadow Stitch. Summon Bolt. Summon Copy. Summon Earth. And last, but definitely not least, Summon Ice. Remember, due to how our elements work, there are many different ways to play Melly, but this is how I personally prefer to do it. In terms of how to equip her, on her weapon slots, I recommend putting Poison Plus, Chill Plus, and Electric Plus gems on her. This will increase the damage Summon Bolt does, along with increases the Poison and Chill damage that Summon Earth and Ice do. On equipment slots, you want to mainly focus on Ether Op gems, and once you've fully maxed out Ether Op, you want to put on things on her that'll make her slightly less frail. I personally opt for unbeatable and HP up gems. In terms of party members to put with her, you definitely want to take a tank who can attract the aggro like Rhine or Dunban. And then the other party slot can go really to anybody. And now time to showcase the absolute havoc Melia can cause in battle. I am now broadcasting to you live from Magna Forest at the Decayed Forest. And who is our unlucky victim of the day? Magnificent Degalus. Let's put him out of his misery. Okay, so I'm going to start off with two Summon Bolts. And then I'm going to go with Summon Ice because I want to save Summon Earth for special events like Elemental Burst and Chain Attacks. So, one of the big reasons I wanted to show this one off in particular is I wanted to show another good aspect about Malaya. Um, the range that she has with Elemental Discharge, because um, Magnificent Degalus has a topple counter spike, so anytime I attack him, watch. See, I'll get toppled. I equipped um, topple resist gems on all the other characters so that I wouldn't have to keep on toppling them. But anyways, Melia, since she has so much range on her attacks, she can attack him anyways and stay out of the range of the topple spike, so she won't get toppled. So that's another really good aspect about Melia, especially considering spikes are one of the most annoying things in the game. That is not good, I should warn Sharma. Um, go for a cure round. There we go, the future has been changed. There's another summon bolt. And I think one more summon ice, and then I'll be at a um, I'm an elemental burst. And yes, okay. And we're almost at a chain attack too. We just need to. Oh wait, no, I'm not at elemental burst. But we're almost at a chain. Okay, there we go. Yes. Elemental burst plus chain attack. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna start off with spear break. Just keep the chain going. Oh yes, Blossom Dance. Uh, actually, I'm gonna risk it and see if I can get another um, extra attack. So I'm just gonna go for Worldly Slash. Headshot. And please, yes. Okay. And time to show off this. This is just stupid. Summon Earth. Just, when this chain attack ends, it's going to do so much. Uh, I'm just going to miss that, because I, I, I want to show you how much it does. Look! 30,000 damage! That... Oh. Like, we killed him literally just by that status effect going off. And that that's just... Oh. I love Summon Earth so much. Anyways, that was it. We beat him. So, in conclusion, Melia is an absolutely fantastic character. 
She's actually pretty broken if you played right, but I feel she has enough negatives to balance that out. I suppose a good way of describing her is high risk, high reward. She has the potential of dishing out the most damage out of anyone in the game, but also the potential of receiving the most damage. She may be a bit confusing at first, but hey, that's why I made this video in the first place. She's extremely unique, which also makes her extremely fun to play as. I'd also say that she's the most interesting in terms of character and plot, but I won't dwell into that. Anyways, have fun with Melia, and please, if you have any of your own tips for Melia, mention them in the comments. I'd be glad to see other strategies regarding her. And who knows, maybe I'll do another one of these someday. I hear a lot of people have trouble with Sharla as well. Anyways, that's all for today, though. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Adios!